again, we're getting toward the end here. Today we're going to about talk about chapter 16, public sector labor relations. That's a big old long line, public sector labor relations. I'm talking about government employees, federal, state, local, that are in unions. And they're everywhere. In fact, you know, we said early on, you know, way back, that 12% that of American workers are in a union. That's true. Most up in the Northeast, we've gone through all that. However, 34% of government employees are in a union. That's, that's real high. 34% of all government workers are in a union. And you're going, well, that can't be, especially down here in the South or whatever. I'm talking about policemen, firemen, school teachers, public administrators. So the list goes on and on of all the people that work for the government that are in a union. So there's a problem there. Government workers, which are supposed to do what's good for the people of the country, are now in a union that is negotiating or in conflict with the government, which is me and you, about whether to provide me and you with the services that we set them up to provide. All oh, that was just hideously circular, wasn't it? But the point is, how does a fireman go on strike? The assumption is when my house catches on fire and I pick up the phone and go help, they come and they squirt water on my house and everything's good. You're telling me that that group has the right to go, guess what, we're withholding our labor today. You pick the wrong day for your house to catch on fire, we're not coming. Or the cop says, I know you're getting burglarized, I know people got guns pointing at you, but we're on strike right now, we just can't come. So there's a huge issue here. You know, when you talk about unions and labor in the private sector, that's the private sector. That's for profit. That's for, you know, so, you know, it's just hurting your profit or hurting your shareholder or whatever. I'm talking about my house burning down now. So we've got, to recap, we got 34% of all these people that we count on to provide goods and services to us as citizens of this country, state, and town. And now they have unionized basically to negotiate with me because I am the government. So there's an issue there. Until 1962, uh, 63, 62, 63, uh, there were no public unions. They just were, they weren't even thought about or they were knocked down by the government. There was no law that supported public unions that said public unions was a good idea or had illegal rights. Uh, but John Kennedy, signed executive, executive Order 10988, which made it appropriate and made it legal for unions to form, to go into contract negotiations with the government. How crazy is that? But there were two big exceptions, two huge exceptions. Number one, they could not bargain over economic situations. They could not bargain over wage. They could not bargain over that. And they could not strike. They could not withhold their labor legally. Every other union can, but the public sector cannot. Um, so here we got this huge group of people, 34% of all union members are in these public unions, but they don't have the two biggest rights that most unions have, which is to negotiate over economic conditions and number two, to strike. Cannot do that. As John Kennedy said, I think you ought to have the ability of a union to bargain with the government. These public employees have the right to bargain. However, he modified it severely. First thing in Kennedy's executive order was that public unions cannot bargain on economic issues. 
Wages are off the table. That's not part of the bargaining process. That's huge. So basically it's what the wage that the state or the federal government is going to, the town is going to give you. That's kind of what it is. He also took off uh, non-staffing issues. So basically how you hire people and don't hire people. So he took a lot of the meat that is usually in an economic contract away from that contract. And in addition, most states have a law that says you cannot strike if you are a public official. If you're in a public workspace in the state, you cannot strike. Now the reality of it is, what are you going to do if they strike? Uh, and we've seen strikes. We've seen teacher strikes. Uh, we recently saw one in 2012 uh, in Chicago. Uh, all of the teachers just would not go back to work at the beginning of the school year. What are you going to do? The whole teacher union in Chicago, are you going to replace every teacher in Chicago? Obviously not. So they went through all that, but they were bargaining and then finally came to an agreement. Um, and that strike was not over economics. It was over replacements and those kind of issues. So they can strike if they want to, even though supposedly it's against the law. But what are you going to do? When they do strike, a lot of times they want to go to both sides mediation and arbitration. We've talked about mediation as being like marriage counselor, we don't count. Arbitration is kind of final. Um, so both parties have to agree to both of those. The point is the unions, the public unions and the government try to try to uh, get, you know, negotiate and, and get rid of these strikes uh, because as we saw in the Chicago situation, Mothers of small children were raising cane because their third grader couldn't go to school, which means the mother could not go to work. So not only was the child not being educated, the, 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 the mother's income was down to zero. So the mother wasn't happy with either side. They weren't, they weren't sympathizing with the teachers or with the, the, the city of Chicago. They were fussing at both of them. Uh, and so neither side really got the, the love and affection of the outside, those third party, that public that they were trying to get. Policemen have done this before. Most policemen that you know are in the union. They just are. And in New York City, they have a law that says you can't go on strike if you're a cop because we need you too much. And they'll, the, the police in New York City every now and then will get what's called the blue flu. Everybody calls in sick. Everybody, what are you going to do? You call up and you fake your voice and you go, oh, I'm real sad. And, and literally 10,000 cops call in sick on a Friday. Can't come into work. What are you going to do? Uh, you know they're not telling the truth. You know they're not sick. <coughs> what are you going to do? So you can have all these laws you want. You can't do this and you can't do that. But when they do that, how in the world are you going to enforce that? So the issue is we have... 12% union members and employees in the United States. Of that 12%, 34%, a huge number, over a third of those are public sector union members. Again, firemen, policemen, school teachers, city administrators, the whole nine yards. So it's a huge issue. Uh, they don't have the exact same rights that uh, a, a non-public, a private union has. Uh, again, they can't negotiate over bargaining, uh, over economic issues, and they can't bargain over staffing issues, uh, and they really don't have the right to strike even though they can withhold their labor because there's really not a whole lot these, these public offices can do to stop that. But the point is, public unions have a major, major influence on our labor uh, and on the way our government functions. So that's all for this time. Y'all be good. I'll see you soon.